Hey there friends, Jeff Fritz here and I've got another tip video for you and today we're going to learn how to use Visual Studio Code better. I've got a bunch of tips for you including hotkeys that you should know and a couple of extensions that I'm going to recommend to you that we want to go through lightning style. Let's go through this quick. You can pause, rewind and take a look at all of the tips, all the hotkeys that I'm going to show you and I've got a PDF just below that's linked so you can download and take a look, maybe print it out and put it somewhere so you can reference some of these hotkeys that I'm going to show you today. Let's get into this. I'm going to be using some C Sharp code as our basis that we're going to navigate around. But whether you're using HTML, JavaScript, PHP code, Java code, this all works the same way no matter what language you're using. All right, let's take a look. Let's get started. First, let's start with control P. That allows you to open up and search for other files that you may have recently used and to open other files. Don't worry about touching the mouse. Use the hotkeys to get in here and search for the files that you want to open immediately. Boom, open. Control tab will take you back and forth around the tabs that you have open. You can navigate around there. Don't forget control shift P will open the command palette and you can execute these commands that interact with Visual Studio and give you a little bit more functionality to make the editor behave the way you want. Also, when you press the alt key, it'll jump up into the menu up top and you can navigate back and forth and execute some of these menu options. Let's get into some basic editing now. When you're interacting with your code, when you're writing some of this code down here, let me scroll down here a little bit. You can, you can copy and paste, of course, using the very simple control X to cut, control V to paste it right back where it was or paste it somewhere else inside of your code. And of course, control C will copy that code and leave it where it already is. And you can paste that wherever you'd like elsewhere. Control Z will undo tasks that you've previously done. Control Y will redo those tasks that you just undid. Now, if I want to delete a line altogether, the entire line, Control Shift K will completely remove that line and I'll Control Z and put it right back in there. If I want to select the entire line, I can use the Control L hotkey to completely select that line. And I can indent and outdent using my square brackets. Control right square bracket will move it across. Control left square bracket will move it back to the left. We may not just want to move things around. We may want to comment and uncomment things. Control K, Control C. So execute two hotkeys back to back will comment that line of code and I can uncomment it with control K, control U, and it goes right back the way it was. If I want to find some code, if I want to find some text in my file, I can use control F and you see the little find dialog appears here and I can type in what I want it to find. Press enter to have it go find the next instance of whatever it is that I'm looking for. I can use control H to do find and replace and I can replace that with some other text that I may want to put in its place right there in that dialog. And I can tell it to go through and replace it multiple times using these buttons right here. This one will find and replace just the first instance. This one will find and replace all of the instances of the code that you have told it to search and replace with. Now, when we get into richer languages, you're working with a specific programming language and you want to have it do more things. You want to have it actually interact and tell you what to do here. Let's undo a little bit here. Um, I, can, I can have it suggest code to me. So I can start typing build and it will give me a list of suggestions here. If that list of suggestions hasn't popped up yet, control space will bring it up for you. Now, once I've gone and, and put in the commands that I want, um, or maybe while it's suggesting something, you can press tab to have it finish that block of text. And I can format my document then by using shift alt F and it will go and format the entire document. So it'll make all of those indents line up appropriately for me inside of the document, make it all nice and and tidy for me. Maybe I only want to have it format a, a selection of code here for me. 
instead of formatting the entire document, I can use Control K, Control F, and whatever is highlighted, it will go and format appropriately. Maybe I'm working inside this block of code over here and I just typed build posts and I want to go find the definition of that. Where, where's that method? Where does that thing actually exist? Use the F12 key to jump right to that definition. All right. And while I'm working here, if I'm going and typing, I might see a little light bulb pop up there. That light bulb is going to offer some quick fixes for you. Use control period and it'll show you here's all the quick fixes that I know that we might want to do with this block of code your cursor is currently hovering over. Also, I can go into that build post right here and I can not just say where is it defined by using F12, but I can do the reverse and say where is it referenced by using shift F12 and I'm going to get this dialog that shows me all the places where it's available and it's been called inside of my current project. Very cool. Maybe I want to rename that method, but I want to have it uh, track everywhere throughout my code. I can use the F2 hotkey and rename it right here. And it will update all of those references throughout my code so that they now reflect the new name of my method. Awesome stuff. Control Z, of course, will undo it, not just right here, but everywhere throughout my code as well. And you can see that right there. Okay. Now, I've renamed, I've moved things around. I may want to navigate around here a little bit and, and bebop around, go bounce around my file. I know where I'm going here. Of course, I can do control G and specify a line number that I want to jump directly to, and it'll pop me right onto that line number. And I've turned on line numbers on the side there. So you can see exactly where you are in my file. Now I've done control tab. I can do to navigate between files. I can do control shift tab to navigate in the other direction around my tabs that you see across the top there. But I can also use Alt Left and Alt Right to navigate through the history of locations that I was working inside of my project. And it will, just like browser history, go backwards and forwards through that history that I was working on. If I want to split this editor, I can use Control Back Backslash, and it will show me two editors now side by side. If you've got a really wide monitor, this is great to use because you can have two full editors right next to each other, or maybe you want to reference and see things back and forth. Split the editor with control backslash. And when I'm ready to get rid of and close the one that I'm working on, of course, I can control tab back and forth on just this one side. I can control W to close that editor and move forward. Now, this code might be a little bit big for you. It might be a little small for you. You can zoom the editor by using control equals. Okay. Control minus to zoom out if you want to want to be able to fit more code on the screen. So I like it in right about there so that you can see what's going on here next to me. There's a sidebar here that I can open and close with control B. You've probably gone and clicked on these icons over here so that you can go through and search across files, see what's going on inside of your source control, interact with debugging the application, but then hide it with control B and you've moved on and you're off in your main editor working again. Now, some of those items that are over here on the side, you're going to want to be able to jump right into them without having to use the mouse. Real easy. E, F, G, and X are the hotkeys that you need to remember to go through these from top to bottom. E is the Explorer. So Control Shift E pops you into the Explorer. F is Find, and that'll jump you right into the search. G is Git. It's Source Control. Control Shift G will pop you right into Source Control for that. And X for Extensions will show you all the extensions that you have installed and allow you to jump through and add more as well. But I can now go through and look at maybe a terminal. If I want to have a terminal that I can interact with doing some command line operations, control back tick will open the terminal down here and you can see I have two of these open and you can manage and interact with writing code, writing command line execution steps all right there at the command line. 
Very cool stuff. Now, let's take a minute and talk about some extensions that you want to use with Visual Studio Code. All right, let me jump into the extensions window again with Control Shift X, and I want to show you there's there's key code overlays here that will help you with your favorite text editor that you might already be using and be able to use some of those hotkeys in Visual Studio Code. So there's folks that have written extensions that support Vim, Emacs, Notepad++, Sublime, Atom, and Brackets. But here's Vim I can jump right into and I can install all the Vim key bindings and capabilities inside Visual Studio if you're a Vim fan and Vim user. You can still get used to your HJKL interactions navigating around Visual Studio Code. Now, some other ones that I've mentioned in other videos that I want to make sure that you know about include Editor Config. And Editor Config allows you to format and force the same format through all of your code files through a little script file that is available that you can write called .editor config. Let me hide that and scroll down here just a little bit so you can see. And there's some supported properties that you can use here. And there's some extension properties that you can use for C Sharp and HTML that Visual Studio Code will also enforce for you. I want to make sure that you know about the .env extension here in Visual Studio Code that'll allow you to take and manage those ENV files that you have and you're using in your JavaScript applications and write some code and get good formatting inside of Visual Studio Code for it. Cool stuff there. Now maybe you have some folks that are writing some, some CSV files or some Excel files that you need to read. Maybe you're importing data from them. You don't wanna necessarily open Excel there is an Excel viewer that's made possible by our friends at Grape City that will allow you to open and interact with code from code and content from Excel right there inside of Visual Studio Code. Great stuff that allows you to go and manage that. I want to make sure you know about a couple of GitHub extensions as well. Let's take a look at GitHub Copilot. You may have seen me use this in other videos. I have GitHub Copilot installed and what it does is it will start suggesting whole blocks of code based on the names of your methods, based on some comments that you add into your application. It will generate what it thinks is the appropriate code to meet your need. Let's take a look at GitLens. GitLens is a tool from our friends at GitKraken that will add a little bit of a hint above your method names and there's even a little bit of a graph that it'll show you down here that will um, show you exactly how long it's been since a block of code has been edited. I have this one installed. Let me go over to action build and when I mouse over a line and I put my cursor there you see I get this little faded block of text here that shows hey here's the person that last touched this line of code. That's helpful in tracking down when lines are changed, when, when updates were made, especially if you're tracking down a bug. You can see this blame information right here and allow you to dig in and find out more about what exactly happened in your code. Check out Jupyter Notebooks as well. They're a neat extension that you can use here that will allow you to open, open Jupyter Notebooks, typically written with Python, but you can also write them with other programming languages, including C Sharp, and allow you to have some code that is both prose, some, some text to go with, executable code blocks inside of your notebook. Um, I'll open one of my notebooks that I have here. And it looks like an HTML document, but I can scroll down here and you can see I've got code embedded inside this document. So I've got text and, and markup mixed with code here, and it's real easy for me to pivot back and forth and hand this off as, as an educational document, as, as, as documentation around how some code works, or maybe even build a report, an interactive report, that other folks in your organization can open and read here in Visual Studio Code. 
Make sure you check out remote containers. That's a way for you to open and work with um, applications inside of a Docker container. Maybe it's on the Azure cloud. Maybe it's even running here locally in a way that will keep all of the code, all of the execution environment for that application inside the container. Okay, you take advantage of having everything isolated and your development workstation is completely clean. It doesn't have tools for an operating system, tools for that programming language installed and kind of cluttering your developer workstation. Check out SQL tools out there as another good one that folks use who are working with database a lot. And you can see I have this one installed. This one allows you to work with many different databases and have the ability to browse and interact with them inside of another tool window. So you end up with a code window that allows you to query and work with your database right here, right next to your code inside of Visual Studio Code. Finally, I talked about containers earlier. You see I have Docker installed over here. Let me make sure I bring up and show you that extension page. Docker has all kinds of things here, including formatting for your Docker files, the ability to navigate through and see what's going on inside of your containers that are running on your machine. Really great tool for anybody that's building and interacting with containers on their native desktop, on their, on their developer workstation. That's just a handful of the extensions, key bindings, and hotkeys that I like to use when I'm working with Visual Studio Code. What hotkeys do you like to use? What are the tools and tips that you have for getting better with Visual Studio Code? Let me know in the comments down below. Do me a favor, click that like button. Make sure you click subscribe so you can be told when I've got more of these videos coming because I've got some information about building on Azure using free services. Let's take advantage and use all of Microsoft's cloud without paying them a dime and other videos coming soon that are going to help make you a better developer. Thanks so much.